Good afternoon. Okay. I know all the youngsters are here eager to get your basketball game started, so I won't take up a lot of time now. But I do think that there are some things that I can say that I can share with you based on my own experience that will be beneficial to you as you move on in your own career, both athletically and academically. And I'm glad to see the parents here because in my own experience, my parents are the reasons why I achieved success on the court and in the classroom. Their support was unbelievable. It was unwavering and it was consistent. I'm talking about my parents. But they also had some demands and they put some responsibility, heavy responsibility on me. There were things that I had to do if I wanted to play basketball. There were things that I had to do if I wanted to play football or any, other, any of the other sports that I engaged in. The most important thing that I had to do was stay balanced. They always said this, maintain balance. We want the same effort, we want the same energy, and we want the same consistency that you show on the basketball court when you're in the gymnasium. We want to see that same thing in the classroom. And there was no compromise. There was no compromising that. So my message to the parents that are here, supporting your children, that is, ev I, that is evident and obvious by your very presence and the money that you've sacrificed to bring them here. That clearly is evidence of your support of them. But I want you to put responsibility on them too. Make them earn it. And in earning it, they help themselves. Make them achieve in class. Don't let them slouch in that area. And to you student athletes, it is your responsibility to put forth the effort as well. Because everybody is not going to be fortunate enough, blessed enough, or even good enough to play sports at a higher level. But that doesn't mean that you can't be successful. When I was your age, see, I've walked this path. And I wasn't always six feet, eight inches tall. You know, I tell people all the time, you don't have to be six, eight to play basketball, but it certainly doesn't hurt. <laughs> when I was much shorter, much younger, I envisioned myself playing basketball at the college level, at the pro level. But thankfully, I had those two parents, mom and dad, who kept me balanced, who knew that there were no guarantees. The only guarantee you get here is that money back that Dennis talked about. That's about the only guarantee. Basketball owes you nothing. It's a great game. It's a great sport. And I'm always encouraged and I'm always excited when I see young people endeavoring to get better. But the game really owes you nothing. But it's there for your taking. You can make the most of it. But if it comes to a point where, you know, it ceases to be a benefit, you got to make sure that you're ready to do something else. And my parents always talked about that. They used to tell me this. Basketball is a privilege. Let me say that again. Basketball is a privilege. Basketball is a what? Privilege. Your education is essential. Let me say that again. Your education is essential. Your education is what? Essential. Because that's the thing that's going to sustain you. You can, you can really trust in that. That's as sturdy a foundation as you will find. Basketball and these other sports, while they, they're so much fun and we enjoy them and we love them and we put a lot of time into them, they're very fickle. They can let you down at any time. Rip a knee up and sports is compromised. Find yourself ineligible and sports, they become compromised. 
So your education is the thing that's going to matter the most. So I challenge each and every one of you as you continue your academic, excuse me, your athletic development and pursue your athletic dreams. I challenge each and every one of you, put that same effort in the classroom. Put that same effort in the classroom. Work hard. Go beyond what is considered good enough. Good enough for me, when I was a student, would have been a C average because I could have played with the C average, could have stayed eligible. No problem. But I couldn't have been eligible in my house. That would not have worked because my potential showed that I could do better. Not because I was smarter than anybody else, no. I didn't become an academic All-America at Michigan State because I was smarter than anybody else. I became an academic All-America at Michigan State because I understood how to manage time. And I understood what was important. And by the time I got to Michigan State, my parents had beat it into my head so much that education was going to take me farther than anything athletically. I understood that I had to work hard. I understood that I had to work beyond what was considered good enough. And I'm so glad I did that. Because while I was so fortunate to play high school basketball and play it well, while I was so fortunate to play college basketball and play it well, and then play NBA basketball and play it well, guess what? That knee injury I talked about got me. After six years, Oh, when I got to the NBA, I wanted to play 15 years. That was my dream and my goal. But it wasn't in the cards. Six years is all I got. And then I had to step aside and do something else. I was 28 years old. Well, thankfully, because of Walter and Verna Kelser, Always telling me, you got to have something else. You got to have a plan B, and your education is critical and it's essential. I was able to take one year after my basketball career in the NBA ended and move into my second career. My second dream, my second goal was to work in television and be a broadcaster, be a professional broadcaster. I didn't want to start it as early as I ended up starting it, but that's the way the cards dropped for me. I'm so thankful that I was able to do that without a lot of trepidation and without a lot of anxiety because I was prepared. My education meant the most. And my education is what made it all possible. And my education proved sturdy and worthwhile and valuable. And it proved that I could count on it. As a result, the basketball that I worked so hard for and put so much time in lasted six years professionally. But the broadcasting career that I sought after basketball and that I also put time into by working hard in the classroom, that has lasted 26 years and counting. So you see what I'm saying? So you go on out there and you play your basketball and play it hard and enjoy it. Get everything out of it that you can. But remember, balance. Balance is the key. When you leave here and you go to class tomorrow, go with a renewed attitude. Go with a different focus, belief and concept and work as hard as you possibly can to max out on your potential in the classroom. Because trust me, that's the thing that is most important. That is your responsibility to yourself. That is your responsibility to your parents here supporting you. And I don't want to see you let yourselves down. And I don't want to see you let your parents down. It is very important. The final thing that I'm going to say to you, and I'm going to share a story about being responsible and being accountable. You know, we as people, a lot of times, we don't like to fess up to our failures. You know, it's so easy to blame somebody else. And athletes in particular, we do it all the time. Why didn't you make the team? Oh, it was the coach. 
Why aren't you playing? Oh, it's the coach. He doesn't know what he's doing. Have you ever heard anybody say, well, you know what, it's me. I didn't work hard enough. Or maybe I'm not good enough. We don't do that. You know, as people, as human beings, we're not easily ones to admit that we didn't work hard enough, that maybe we failed or maybe we can do better. 1979 in Michigan State, I'm on the best team, college team in America. We win the national championship, and everybody in America is celebrating the Spartans and our style of play and loving myself, loving my teammate, Irvin Magic Johnson, and all the rest of us. We were highly, highly celebrated. So, you know, one of the benefits of being on a great college basketball team and being one of the best players in America, well, when it comes time to get drafted, you get drafted really high. Now, the downside of that is you're probably going to go to a bad team. Bad teams pick high. So in 1979, I was drafted the fourth player selected. My teammate, Irvin Magic Johnson, by virtue of a trade, I'm telling you, this guy, he, Magic is the right name for him because things happen. The Lakers, who were one of the best teams in the league, had another team's pick that was the worst team in the league, and they were selecting number one, so they took Urban Magic Johnson. So he went from a great college team to a great pro team. But David Greenwood, who went second to Chicago, went to a bad team. Bill Cartwright, who went third to New York, went to a bad team. Greg Kelso, who went number four, went to the Detroit Pistons, a bad team. They drafted me because they thought I could help them turn it around right away. Well, my name is not Magic. <laughs> I couldn't turn the Pistons around right away. So I go from being on one of the best college teams to one of the worst pro teams. And that year, we had one of the worst seasons in the NBA. I was a rookie. Now, while I had a good individual year, as a team, we did not play well. Now, when the season ended, I didn't really want to be associated with that. I wanted to be associated with being a winner, not a loser. And I was like, everybody else had all the excuses. So our coach, you know, that's the other thing. When you're on a bad team and your season goes bad, you're probably going to get a new coach. And we got a new coach. So when the new coach comes in, he wants to have a meeting with everybody. And the question he asks, why did the season go so badly? Well, after he had met with everybody, he got us all together and he said, you know what? In our individual meeting, I asked each and every one of you, why did the season go so poorly? He said, not one of you, not one of you, not one of you put the blame on yourselves, you, yourself. You had all kinds of excuses, but no one blamed himself. Well, when he said that, that resonated with me. Because I said, you know what? If I'm honest about this, I got to take responsibility. I was a part of the team. I could not take the, 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 the honor and the prestige and all the accolades with being a champion and not be willing to take the blame for the failure of the Detroit Pistons in 1980. It goes, in hand, it goes hand in hand. You can't have it both ways. So I learned a valuable lesson. We're responsible for our, self, our successes, and we want that acknowledgment, but we are also responsible for our failures. So now when things go wrong, things don't quite go the way as planned, first person I look at is myself. Because if I do that, critical self-analysis, then I've already started to solve the problem. And if you're a part of a team, and if everybody does that, then you're already getting better. Because people are taking personal accountability, and they are figuring out what must be done to get better. Don't blame anybody if it doesn't work out for you. You've got the support. You've got the opportunity. The responsibility is yours to make the most of it. Be accountable. Be responsible. And when the success comes, hey, bask and glow in it. But when it doesn't quite measure up, just work a little bit harder.
That's my message to you. And finally, I hold this book up because this book is about my journey. And in it are a lot of lessons. Becoming a champion, falling down, getting back up again, persevering, working hard in the classroom. I consider this a must read, a must read. And the books are for sale right over there at the table. So parents, while your kids go and start warming up, you come on over here with me to the table <laughs> and make sure they read this. And I'm serious because I believe in this. I believe in the journey. I believe in the process. And I know that each and every one of us, we have special gifts, special blessings. And all we have to do is just work hard to maximize our potential. Keep pushing them, parents, youngsters. Make the most of it, okay? Best of luck today.